Hello, everybody. Welcome into Ohio Stadium. It was the Buckeyes 34, Michigan State 10. We are in the tunnel here, the Players Tunnel at the Horseshoe. Uh, another win, win number six for the Buckeyes. This is Rapid Reaction brought to you by Byers Auto. This is Tim May. This is Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. You can see people still filing through here uh, as Ohio State celebrates the win. Jerry Emig handing out the post-game pie. Uh, well, you, what's left of it after Jerry Emig dived into it? You can tell that the Buckeyes are feeling pretty good. It, it was kind of a strange night, though, Tim, as we dive into the coverage here. It, Ohio State controlled this game. They had a little bit of a sloppy start. They wound up covering easily and winning by 24 points against a ranked opponent. It almost feels like it wasn't satisfying to some people, but it was a, a well, dominant performance. Yeah, without a doubt, Michigan State's defense is for real. They, As I was telling people before the game, this is a defense that you're not going to snooker. They're going to be in their gaps. They're going to be coming. They're going to be playing hard. But you, you know, if you just keep going at them, you're going to get a play or two. And that's why I asked uh, Ryan Day that question about, you know, Ohio State, the thing that stands out about this team right now is it has an answer. Almost, it finds an answer no matter what you throw at them eventually. And the answers were J.K. Dobbins for 67, a short pass to Benjamin Victor that he turns into a spectacular yeah. touchdown. Those were huge plays in this game because it was never going to come easy against this defense. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Buckeyes obviously come out wearing all black, dressed for a funeral, and almost had one <laughs> in the first quarter because they looked like a team that was uh, not really alive yet. And then something happened. The, the switch got flipped in the second quarter. and. Most of that, I think, is is just an example of how good this team can be. We're talking about Michigan State's defense is good, okay? That's that's a good team that the Buckeyes just played. They put up 530 yards, 300 of them in the second quarter. Yeah. They gave up only 260 yards. They turned the ball over. The offensive line was a little sloppy at times. Justin Fields was beat up a little bit. And they beat a top 25 team by 24 <laughs> points at home and, and could have easily had to be a, a much bigger win than that. I, I just don't think that, you know... I, People expect perfection every time these guys walk on the field, and you're not always going to be at your very best. Tonight, the Buckeyes were not at their very best against a very good team. And yet, and the dominated. And yet, statistically, they ran for more than 300 yards against a team that was only giving up 57.8 yard average. Now, yeah, I know it is your product of who you've played, et cetera. So was Ohio State, but you know, J.K. Dobbins had his what 13th? Did we figure out? Yeah, 13th. 13th 100 yard game of his career, fourth of this season. I mean, he. He is steadily getting on track. I, I was going to start right there with the offense because J.K. Dobbins, I, I keep asking Ryan Day about this, and it's like they're trying to be careful. But the way he's running, I mean, the pad level, the aggressiveness. The lean. The, when he hits that hole and goes, this is not the way he's played. He didn't play that way as a sophomore. That's why he called last year a failure. And he showed glimpses of it as a freshman, but he wasn't quite ready to be in every down back. Yeah. That's why he didn't have a, a solo workload when Mike Weber was around. But this guy right now, it's almost it's it's weird to hear the praise that Jonathan Taylor gets and J.K. Dobbins is putting up better statistics, just not in the touchdown department. He is and he's also overshadowed by Justin Fields and Chase Young on this team. Right. He is a special back. I know that you've <laughs> that Texas tie, you've had a long well, had your eye yeah. on this guy. Well, his, him, my, my youngest brother has a uh, vacation, a, vaca a weekend home in LaGrange, right outside LaGrange. So he's always had that going for him. Yeah. He was telling me about this, about J.K. Dobbins when he was a freshman there. Is Ohio State interested in him? Evidently they were. <laughs> but the bottom line is, the other thing that stood out this offensive line, which has been killing people, pardon the expression, yeah. running over people, rough shot for the first five games, they had a fight on their hands tonight. And, uh, uh, they found a way to make some things happen, but it was it was sort of hit or miss. And Michigan State's defensive line is yes. probably the best part of their defense. I mean, that's not even speaking about Joe Bocci, who's the best middle linebacker in the Big Ten. But especially in that first quarter, you don't want to belabor that point too much. But it looked like an offensive line that had, for, for the first time this year, got punched in the mouth. Yeah. And they were a little bit surprised at uh, how hard that punch was thrown. And, and you see guys like Mike Panachuk, or Panachuk, however you pronounce his name. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, what? it was uh, a really dominant performance by the Michigan Linguist, State. I think, was the yeah, word you looked for. I'm not ahead. one of those either. Uh, Linguini, I am starving. Um, but uh, the reality is that you're going to play against better competition as the season goes along. And I think it's very important for Ohio State that they had this happen tonight uh, and still were able to walk out of here feeling pretty decent yeah. about themselves because most, yeah, there's most, stuff to grow from. Most of the time, a game with Michigan State, just like Ryan Day talked about, a game with Michigan State's going to be a – it's a meat grinder. A, yeah, it's going to be a fight. I mean, it's going to be a fight, especially in the trenches because, like I said a while ago, this is a defense that doesn't 
that, that plays sound, that doesn't get out of their gaps, that you literally have to beat them on a play. And uh, the Benjamin Victor thing was a great example of that. They made one little mistake in their coverage. Justin Fields converts it in a pass to, to Benjamin Victor, and he goes up the sidelines and does some – you know, pylon uh, move. Seems and to be gets, his thing after right, the catch. But that's what you have to do against a defense like this. Yeah, and Benjamin Victor, by the way, it's, it's another one of those like up and down parts of this game, which is weird to say when you win so handily over a ranked opponent, but he dropped a, a one that could have been a touchdown early yeah. in the game from Justin Fields. You never know what kind of can opener that would be. There right? you go. And yeah. that, that could have done it. And that's we well, could be having a very different conversation on Rapid Reaction brought to you by Byers Auto. And it would have made Justin Fields' night look a whole lot different. He still accounted for three touchdowns. Uh, he did throw the first pick of his college career at Ohio State. Uh, a really long string to go through those first five plus games before having one. And, but that's going to happen. And I think I asked Ryan Day this if he needed to learn something about Justin Fields in a tougher game, one that doesn't go smoothly. And Mike, that first quarter looked pretty ugly. And that was the first time that yep. Justin Fields had his back against the wall. He took a couple hard shots in this game. Uh, he, he just kept coming back. He stayed on the field even late. Uh, he looked. He took a shot, and Spencer Holbrook was down on the field. And he said they were checking him for a concussion, and he looked like he was limping a little bit. So he was well, beat was up on his touchdown run. Yeah, on his little was, touchdown off right side, he got hit right in the hip and stuff. And it was a it was a big time hit. And uh, Spencer was standing right there when the officials said, "Basically, go get checked out." He's and, pointing at his eyes. And that's been. And I, I'll say this for Justin Fields: if people have any doubts about his toughness, they shouldn't. This is at least the third time that he's got to the goal line and lowered his head and, and gave his body to score. Yeah, uh, This guy, I continue to be impressed by him, and I'm not going to – he missed a few throws in the first quarter, sometimes holds the ball too long, takes too many sacks, but oftentimes you're going to get something special out of it, and this is another – Part of his growth. Yeah, and the interception was a classic thing that I mean Ryan Day took the blame for it, but I, I'm not sure that's accurate. But uh, he took the blame for it because they didn't get the they didn't get the defense they thought they were going to get. Well, you've got to see that, you know. And like Justin Fields said, he saw it literally as he was releasing that a guy had come off his man and and fallen in that little gap there. But uh, yeah, everything's a learning experience for these guys. I mean, this was Justin Fields' sixth start as a collegian. He's got he's quarterback in the number four team in the nation. And they just put up over 500 yards of offense again. I think overall they feel pretty good about the totality of it. But they're also probably really glad they're getting this off when you come yeah. in. Because as Justin Fields alluded to post game, this is the most banged up he's felt after a game. Michigan State is a physical team. They hit you hard. The offensive lineman, Brandon Bowen, walking out of the post game press, very ginger. You know, he came back to play after missing last week. This is a team that needs a little bit of a week off. I think they might be the last team in the Big Ten to get a bye week. Uh, I don't like the term by week. It's an no, off it's week. not. Well, it's off not, week. not it's accurate an anyway. Week. It's off week. It's an yeah. off week. Um, you know, and I think that uh, what you see is is a team that has some room to grow, but I, I, you can't tell me there's four better teams than them in the country. And then defensively, we haven't talked about yeah, the defense yet. There. Go ahead, man. I yeah, mean, and I want to add to what Broom said there about them being banged up. Chase Young. I know everybody saw him walk off gingerly in the fourth quarter. He said he's totally fine. Damon Arnett. Uh, he missed the entire second half. Not sure of the exact injury there, but I, I talked to him coming off the field. He said it was precautionary. Uh, Brandon Bowen, you mentioned the back injury. Tyler Friday didn't play in this game tonight. Roger they, Mitchell's still out. Uh, Roger Mitchell was out, and they 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 didn't really play, to my to my eye, just walking out of here. Tyreek Smith, as much as I thought he, he could or should play. Zach Harrison got a, a big sack there for Ohio State. So this is a team that they can still get healthier and yeah. better, Tim, but, but to your point, the defense – has well, been pretty special. It was very interesting to me because tonight, I mean, I tried to ask some of the players, and they, they looked at me wide-eyed like they didn't know how to answer why this was. But the Ohio State played the almost the entire first half, or at least they came out in like with uh, three cornerbacks, including Sean Wade, <laughs> yeah. and a high safety, uh, Jordan Fuller. A couple of times they put Okuda back at the high safety and kind of mixed and mashed, but uh, with three linebackers and four defensive linemen. I mean, they just kind of took them on with their front seven, they're classic front seven, but then they're best cover guys, you yeah. know, and uh, that was a departure from things we've seen. Now, who knows, there might have been, one of those guys might have been a bullet, you know, but uh, he went, his helmet, helmet wasn't flashing, but it's just another example of how they came up with another scheme yeah. to kind of deal with them. Now, with that said, Michigan State had some success moving the ball on occasion tonight and missed one wide open play that could have really made it a game uh, uh, and then missed the field goal, I think, right after that. But but uh, Somehow Chase Young didn't block those two field goals. Yeah, which is hard to believe. But I thought I thought as the game progressed, I thought the defense played well. They had a few first downs, 
and they scored a touchdown and had a couple of drives that were pretty interesting. But I thought the defense in a big time game like this, number 25 team in the country, I thought played overall pretty well, holding less than 300 yards. Yeah, for Michigan State, that's an, an offense that's been inconsistent. And sometimes you can't tell if they're right. working hard or hard Lewerke. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the, he shall be appearing the, all the week. The truth is that uh, Ohio State is versatile on defense. They have the opportunity to bring in and out a lot of guys. Zach Harrison playing in the Rushman package early in the game was a surprise to me. Um, but you know, you still early see and often, early and often, yeah. and then you see Baron Browning continuing to just be a heat-seeking missile yeah. uh, when he gets an opportunity to to get in the game and get after the quarterback. And we've talked about it for weeks. They're so versatile and the ability to be multiple and do so many different things and I just think that a lot of these teams are playing maybe are still thinking oh we, we watched them last year we know what they are but this is not the same defense isn't it amazing though to, to from one year to the next I keep reminding people it's college football one guy he's 18 then he's 19 then he's 20 you know the amazing Baron Browning how he has just blossomed into this force out there I mean it's I think, it's interesting. I think it's interesting is a good word for it, Tim. And I, I don't think that, like, Jeff Halfley and Greg Madison are getting a lot of credit for that, and they should. Uh, they're doing a much – and Al Washington. And Al Washington. Matt Barnes, and, and obviously what Larry Johnson always yeah. does. Coaches deserve credit the same way that you blame the old staff for the problems. But when things do get turned around like this, you have to give a lot more credit to the kids. And Mickey Marotti got a game ball. He put them through their paces in the offseason. Uh, tough Borland. Uh, you know, he didn't have an amazing night early on, but he still wound up with five or six tackles and made a play there. Baron Browning, talk about a turnaround from last year. Jordan Fuller with the pick that sort of put it away. Yeah. Uh, and then those early uh, two fumble recoveries for Ohio State. Damon Arnett rips a ball out. Malik Harrison scoops it up, keeps Ohio State in the game when the offense is struggling. These Those guys were on the team a year ago. They, yeah. were, they were part of the problem, but they deserve – a tremendous amount of credit for the hard work that they put into fixing. In, interesting, by the way, Damon Arnett. You, you think he may have aggravated his hand? I mean, it looked Ripping like it out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, because he didn't play in the second half, like you talked about. But they had Cam Brown go in there, and, and they had some. They robbed Peter to pay Paul, and, and did a good job, in my opinion. Interesting thing. We're, I was talking to J.K. Dobbins uh, after the game, and uh, one of the things I asked him was, "When did Justin Fields prove to you that he's not only this five-star super talent, but that he's tough?" And I was thinking he was going to say a couple of games ago when he took a couple. You know, he said in the in the spring and summer during workouts and stuff, the Mickey Marotti camp, yeah. so to speak. That's when he proved himself to the whole team that he wasn't just some glamour guy. And uh, <laughs> I think it's I think people saw it again tonight. He took some licks tonight. Yeah, I thought he played in a big game against a really good defense. I thought he played very well. Yeah. I know he didn't have the stats to like necessarily back it up. And he made one big mistake, but. This guy's coming of age right before our eyes. I actually asked somebody back in the spring if, if Justin Fields had done enough to be, you know, the guy they looked to as the leader. And they said, like, the second day of practice, there was a fight. And he jumped in the middle of it instead of being, like a lot of quarterbacks, will back out of it. Passive. Like, this yeah. is a kid who was in the second practice at Ohio State, jumped into the middle of the fight to, you know, show what he was worth. And, and I think that you see that he's a guy on the field who's willing to fight. Because as we've talked about, he keeps getting hit, he keeps getting up, he keeps making big plays. And I think that, you know, this team knows that it lives and dies by what happens to Justin Fields. But at this point, he just looks like a guy that is willing to go however far he has to go to get them to it. You know what I said about answers, having answers. They they pulled that one out of their sleeve a few times tonight. Justin Fields, go run. Go run. Go run for the first down. Go do this. And uh, that's what they've got going for them. They've got that talented quarterback that can beat you and all else fails. Not this is going to yeah. happen every time, but that's what sets this team apart right now, along with the ridiculous turnaround by this defense. And look, this this guy's got 26 touchdowns accounted for in the first six starts of his career. That's a pretty good pace yeah. over the course that's of the year. That's called school record. That's called Big Ten record yeah, pace. He's he's, uh, he's going to be pushing Dwayne Haskins for that mark that he set a year ago. Ohio State 6-0. They're heading into the bye week. Justin Fields a big part of that. Chase Young in the Ohio State defense and a bunch of other guys fueling that start. It was Buckeyes 34, Spartans 10. Uh, a lot more coverage coming at LettermanRow.com. This has been Rapid Reaction brought to you by Byers Auto. These guys, Tim May, Jeremy Birmingham, I am Austin Ward. Off date coming, as I said, but we got a lot more coverage. We'll talk to you all next week.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.